can't stop worrying about your upcoming fill in the blank job interview, meeting with your boss, presentation at work, new date, first uh, first date with somebody, your meeting, who the heck knows, whatever that upcoming event is that you just cannot stop worrying about. Or maybe you're just a regular worrier who worries about things in the future all the time. Now, one important reminder is the human brain is wired to worry and to plan and to avoid danger. And really that's what's going on here. This isn't rocket science. This isn't even per se new information. The theme of all of these videos is how do we embody these ideas? How do we bring them online promptly in our lives to reduce our worry, reduce our suffering, get some sanity on a day-to-day -day basis? That's what this video is going to be. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. I hope you find this video. helpful. One thing you may want to become aware of is this thing called the default mode network. It's fancy neuroscience jargon for the part of our brain that when we're not engaged in a task, we're not distracted by activity, the default mode network comes online. And what it does is it worries and thinks about the future or it dwells and ruminates on the past. So that's what's happening when you get stuck in these thinking patterns. Part one would just be start to notice when that happens. Then from there, there's certain things we can do about it. I will start reading from the Daily Stoic, August 21st from Ryan Holiday. Okay, today's topic is don't be miserable in advance. It's ruinous for the soul to be anxious about the future and miserable in advance of misery. Engulfed by anxiety, engulfed by anxiety that the things it desires might remain its own until the very end. For such a soul will never be at rest. By longing for things to come, it will lose the ability to enjoy present things. Seneca Moral Letters 998.5b-6a. 9, the reading goes on. This is Ryan's take. The pragmatist, the person of action, is too busy to waste time on such silliness. The pragmatist can't worry about every possible outcome in advance. Think about it. Best case scenario. If the news turns out to be better than expected, all this time was wasted with needless fear. Worst case scenario, we were miserable for extra time by choice. And what better use could you make of that time? A day that could be your last? You want to spend it in worry? In what other area could you make some progress while others might be sitting on the edges of their seat? passively awaiting some fate. Let the news come when it does. Be too busy working to care. A variety of different angles we could we could take here. I'm going to, firstly, I'm going to describe a simple equation for anxiety. So literally, this is all about anxiety, right? So anxiety is worrying about a future event, overestimating the negative consequences or outcome of that future event, and most importantly, underestimating your ability to cope with it. That's not really mentioned here. One thing I think that often comes across in these readings and perhaps is even misunderstood a lot in Stoic philosophy is we're not trying to shut down the emotions. We're not trying to make them go away. We're not trying to numb them. We're trying to learn to notice them, allow them to be, and then not be influenced to the extent we might otherwise be influenced by them. Yes, I'm anxious right now. Yes, I'm worried. Yes, I'm scared. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm sad, whatever. We need to allow the emotions to be present in order for them to pass. One criticism, if you will, of this reading, I would say is the last sentence, really, be too busy working to care. The problem with so many people when it comes to worry or anxiety is they do, they busy themselves so much, they work too much, they, whatever. They're always busying themselves with activities. And while there's some value in that, it's not a good long-term solution because you're just always trying to stay ahead of the worry and the anxiety and you're distracting yourself, you're avoiding. You may be really productive, you may accomplish great things, although it's not a good long-term solution. If that helps you at times, it definitely helps me at times. When I'm anxious sometimes, I try to focus on some action, 
Uh, it really depends on the nature of the anxiety, where I am, what's available to me in any moment. If I can busy myself with activities or things to do, I might try that. If I'm not in a situation where I can busy myself with activities, then I need to turn inward, practice some meditation, some calming, some grounding practices. Depends, right? And, and also some of us have different inclinations to what's going to work for us. So you might want to figure that out for yourself. What are the things that help you with your anxiety? And are you doing it in some set, in some sort of balance? Okay, you can't always busy yourself all the time. You can't always take a nap and meditate and hide from the world. So what's the balance there? Another practical tip you could say would be start to develop a relationship to the worry and to the anxiety. Maybe you could name it, name it Bob, name it, I like the word, the gremlin or the itty bitty shitty committee, name it, who knows? Name it your inner critic, name it whatever you need to name it. Try to depersonalize it a little bit, get some space. Uh, that might be helpful. So name your anxiety, name your worry. Talk to it, perhaps. Thank it for reminding you that uh, you have an important thing coming up. Or thank you for reminding you to be vigilant and careful and diligent about your activities. And perhaps remind it that there's nothing you can do about that in this moment. That worrying is not going to help. This is a big component of cognitive behavioral therapy. This is also a big component of acceptance and commitment therapy, all kinds of therapy, you, DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, all these alphabet soup therapies are all pointing in the same direction. And this is not new, okay? You can see it in the Stoic writings from thousands of years ago. You can see it in Buddhist wisdom and Taoist wisdom. It's all over the place, okay? The practice and the wisdom and the skillfulness comes from being able to integrate it in the moment that it's happening. Now, we can't just tell ourselves not to worry because we are worrying. This is one of the biggest things I see with clients uh, and people struggling with anxiety and worry is they expect themselves not to worry or think there's something wrong with them because they're worrying. And that's never going to help. So we need to reframe that in, in a thankfulness and a gratitude to the anxiety. And we need to remind ourselves there's nothing we can do about it now. And perhaps there is something we can do to reduce the anxiety in this moment. So maybe we can busy ourselves with an activity or a chore or something like that. Maybe we can sit down and meditate relax, slow down, go for a walk, call a friend, do something like that. What you can't do is nothing, okay? You need to do something. The nature of what it is that you do, who knows? I think sometimes one last reflection on this is, you know, the reading says the pragmatist, the person of action is too busy to waste time with this. Again, this, this overlooks the reality that you can't stop your mind from worrying. It's going to worry. It's going to say all kinds of things. It's going to butt in with its opinions and its you know, thoughts and fears and whatever, because it thinks it's trying to help you. So if you can't rationalize out of your pro yourself out of your problems, which is perhaps a criticism of cognitive behavioral therapy and just this very cognition focus, just don't think about it. Just think about something else approach is that you can't do that or many people can't do that. So if you're one of those people like myself who can't really do that, other practices can come in. And over time, at least in my experience, I've gotten better at rationalizing myself out of worry or out of a difficult situation. Although that's only on the back of much work in the other domains that I've discussed. So the mindfulness, the relaxation practices, or the action-based uh, busyness, if you will. So perhaps. Get out a piece of paper. I'm going to try to stick to this practice throughout these videos. Write a line down the middle of the page. What are all the things you're worrying about? What can you do about those things? And perhaps naming the anxiety on this side, okay? Perhaps coming up with a plan of action the next time you get anxious or worry. And maybe we'll even uh, reference the serenity prayer here, which I think is so common nowadays. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. That's basically everything else around you. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And wisdom to know the difference. It's a wonderful prayer, metaphor, mantra. You don't have to be a religious person to admire that and use that. It's very wise and helpful. Focus on what you can do in this moment, one step at a time. 
lower down. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment on it, share it with someone you think might find it helpful. Consider supporting it, this channel on Patreon. Without further ado, thank you very much. I will stop talking. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.